What's going on, everybody? C4 here today and posed a question on Twitter with Jordan Hicks going down for the season, with Jason Peters going down for probably four weeks minimum. So when I said, we're fully going to go in the draft, what are some players you're going to want to look at in particular? So I'm feeling right now on, I'm recording this on October the 24th. I, mean, I think it was last October that I predicted that the Philadelphia Eagles would sign Alshon Jeffrey and a Tory Smith. So now I feel like maybe take the like, October vibes. I love Halloween. October's my favorite month of the year. Maybe, just maybe, um, I should foresee what picks Philadelphia is going to make in the upcoming draft. So I am releasing my very first official Mock Draft 1.0 of the season. And this is going to be the most ridiculous one because I'm basing my grades off of like Walter Football and... And my own opinion and trying to look at big boards and stuff like that. So right now, there's really no set grades for where players are going to go. So I'm kind of going with my gut on how this is. So I'm definitely going to regret maybe looking back on this once, you know, kind of people start getting their mock drafts out where I have players going. But for some of these guys, I do feel that there's a strong case that Philadelphia will be able to draft them where they want. So... So miscellaneous, first thing is first, the Philadelphia Eagles don't have a second or third round pick. We have a fourth round pick that could turn into a third round pick uh, for Eric Rowe and the Patriots if Eric Rowe plays X amount of snaps, but he's currently injured, so I don't expect that to change. So it's going to look like we have three fourth round picks as it stands. And uh, looking at in-house, guys that are set to be free agents after this year, Alshon Jeffrey, Timmy Jernigan, Patrick Robinson, Nigel Bradham, Trey Burton, and Darren Sproles. Bo Allen's there. I think we were signed Bo Allen. The article I was looking at was written like way back when, so I, I, I feel like Bo Allen got extended, but he might only got signed for a one-year deal. So looking at that, we're not going to be able to sign everyone. I kind of think Darren Sproles is not going to cost a whole lot. I think he's more so we're going to give him an opportunity to come back and play if he wants to. So he is going to be on the cheap. And then guys like LeGarrette Blount, I think those dudes are going to be gone. Uh, Tory Smith will probably get let go, so that'll free up some cap space because we're gonna need we're gonna need help on cap. Jason Peters is a odd one because he already took a hit to, to less money to stay, but is he is he still gonna be healthy enough to play a tackle? Is he gonna stay a tackle? Uh, that that's a tough one. That's a tough one to say. Uh, Bo Allen, I would like to see Bo Allen back. I don't think he'd cost too much. Bradham and Jernigan, those are the big two, I would say, at this given point that we need to bring back. I can definitely see Jim Swartz fighting to get both those guys retained. Bradham, actually, for some reason, Bradham, for me, out of all these free agents, seems like the wild card that might want too much money. Um... He's been consistent play. He's either going to be an affordable deal or he's going to want too much. I don't think there's going to be a middle ground when it comes to Bradham. Uh, Jordan gets an absolute monster, man, becoming one of my favorite players on the Philadelphia Eagles. So I'd love to have him back, and I think we will make the move. Uh, Alshon, you know, it's one of those things. His stats aren't going to be great. He probably won't break 1,000 yards. He definitely won't break double-digit touchdowns. But we all know Alshon Jeffrey is the reason why Zach Ertz and Nelson Aguilar are having big years. And I don't think the front office is too blind not to see that. It's one of those things if they let Alshon Jeffrey go and then like, oh, we'll pick Aguilar starting wide receiver and whatever with Ertz. And then next year, if they have no Alshon, their stats are going to take a dramatic drop-off. Uh, even with the emergence of Wentz continuing to get better. So I think Alshon is going to be pretty damn big for us to come back. And I think because of his stats, he might not really cost a king's ransom. So I feel like Alshon, there's a probability he'll come back. Uh, Trey Burton probably will leave to go get more minutes elsewhere. I definitely think he could be a starting tight end in this league. Same with Patrick Robinson. That's another wild card scenario because he's playing really, really well. He's signed on a one-year deal in his age. But I don't know if he's going to want to try to cash out and get as much money as humanly possible because that is not the position Philadelphia is in. So that being said, that's kind of giving you an idea of where we're going to need to delegate our draft picks. In the first round, I was selecting Mike McGlinchey, the offensive tackle from Notre Dame. I still personally feel like Philadelphia tries to trade back. Looking at last year's draft class, for about the range they're going to pick at, be it 32, like we all hope, or like a minimum, between like 25 and 32, um, I believe it was the Seahawks. I could get this wrong. There's two teams. I think it was the Seahawks and the Packers. Uh, the Seahawks were able to trade back from their spot to pick up a later third round or later first round pick and a third. So that would give Philly another third round pick because they were currently missing out on one. Or another team traded back. I can't remember. I think it was with the Browns. They were able to get a for their first round pick, which I think was 20 something, 26 maybe. A second, a third, and a seventh. I, pro I would take that right now, personally. I would rather trade back out of the first round and get more picks because I think the second to fourth round is where there's going to be lots of value in this year's draft class. But if we do decide to stay at the first round pick, I think tackle is the spot we go. Jason Peters has said, uh, I think it was last offseason, that he will be willing to move into guard. And as much as we think Wisniewski is serviceable, he is. Uh, I think having Jason Peters just still playing on the line at guard, slowing down a little bit. Like Jason Peters could probably play another... 
if he stays healthy. He looks indestructible right now. Two torn kills, he's come back. Uh, looked like he and he had an air cast on it against the uh, Redskins that he was done for the year. Turned out only MCL sprain, so he's still going to be able to come back at some point this year. He's indestructible. He's like a cockroach, except he's a gigantic bodyguard. So, I mean, with how lo his longevity, I could see Jason Peters playing two more years if he moves into guard. I don't know what level he's going to play at, if that's what he wants to, but it's up to him. Um, so that being said, we need another tackle. I, I don't think Vitae is the answer as a starter. I think Vitae is going to be good depth, but not a starter. And Mike McGlinchey, a Philly boy, I think for me that is good value. This is one of the better tackle classes in the last five, six years. I mean, I made a video ranking my offensive linemen and said it might, is it, it might be the best tackle class in a decade. So I think Mike McGlinchey, who has had some ups and downs, might get selected you know, after the likes of Connor Williams, Trey Adams, who's coming off an injury, Orlando Brown. So he should be there. Should, we'll say could be there at the bottom half of the first round. He's a very talented tackle. Monster of a man, 6'8", 320, probably some of the ideal tackle build that you want. Great length. I'd jump all over Mike McGlinchey. Going to the fourth round, we have a pick from the Minnesota Vikings, and I believe we will select Mark Walton, the running back from Miami. He's been one of my sleepers from the running back spot all draft process already, this early process. 5'9", 210. On the year right now, he has 428 yards, averaging 7.6 yards per carry. He has three touchdowns, seven catches for 100 yards. So he has a good set of hands on him, very explosive. Last year for the U, over 1,000 yards, 14 TDs, catches 30 balls. He's just, in terms of the fourth round, for what we want as a three-down back, only thing against him is his size. I mean, he's 210. That's like a McCaffrey. I still think, I think anything above that, I think he could be a every down back. He's not, you know, we're not getting into Nell Pumphrey territory where the guy's just so small he's not going to be able to handle the sheer amount of carries and the size and the hits in the NFL. I think Mark Walton, for me, looks like kind of 2.0 Lamar Miller when Lamar Miller was in Miami. I don't think he's as explosive as Lamar Miller, but I think he has much better vision. And that's probably that's maybe the issue with Lamar Miller right now is that he's so fast, but he just doesn't know where to go beyond the line of scrimmage. And that's why he's not really having any success there. Um... But I definitely think Mike Walton would be a tremendous pickup here at the running back spot. I know a lot of people want to go running back in the first round. I do too, kind of. But you need to realize we need a running back and a tackle. And we're going to be able to get a much better tackle in the in the first round and then a better running back in the fourth round versus going running back in the first round and then tackle in the fourth round. So I think a guy like Mark Walton could very well be uh, a three down back for the Philadelphia Eagles. Going to our second fourth round pick from New England. This is the one that could eventually turn to a third, but I don't really expect it to be. Um, so we'll stay here in the fourth round. TJ Edwards, the linebacker from Wisconsin, 6'1", 250 pounds on the year right now. He has 38 tackles, four and a half tackles for a loss, a sack, three interceptions. One of those was a pick six. Um, I, I think he right now is projected to go between rounds three and five. So we kind of went in the middle rounds here with a four. He's one of my favorite linebackers in this year's draft class. I think there's plenty of linebackers to go. And I think Philly does end up getting two linebackers because their linebacking depth is not great. And this is a draft really for Philly where we need to build up depth. Not a lot of outright starters. Like outside of running back, maybe wide receiver. We don't need a whole lot of starters here in the skill positions. So I think it's now time to build up some depth. So we stop. We can, we can just stop relying on Najee Good and Joe Walker as our linebacker depth because our linebacker are constantly injured with Jordan Hicks and Michael Kendricks. Both those guys, as much as I like Hicks, and as much as I've liked the, the turnaround of Michael Kendricks, those guys are both proven to be unreliable. You cannot rely on them to be healthy for an entire season. So I think going out and getting, well, I guess in terms of our picks, a, a fairly big investment here for the Philadelphia Eagles. My third pick, getting TJ Edwards. It is worth the investment. This guy's a great linebacker. can drop back into coverage, is a, is a thumper. And I think because he might not have some limitations in terms of his skill, his skill testing, his, his speed, his agility. I think he should very well be there in the fourth round, and that would be a tremendous pickup for the Philadelphia Eagles. Uh, moving to our last fourth round pick, which belongs to us. I was going with Darren Carrington, the wide receiver, formerly of Oregon. Chip Kelly, Oregon Duck Bias, now of Utah, the Utah Utes. I think he's an absolute playmaker. 6'2", 205, has some off-the-field issues, which is why he get kicked off Oregon. And uh, I think that is why he'll be still be there looking for a job in the fourth round. I mean, there's going to be a couple wide receivers here, I think, that would be good picks. Antonio Callaway from Florida, even though I do I do think that guy's going to be a liability off the field. But in terms of on-field talent ability for, for what we need in Philly, we really need a guy. Either you're going to go with a guy that could best develop into a legit wide receiver, or you just get a role player that can really you know spread the field. And if that's what you do, you maybe go with a Callaway. But if you go with a guy like Carrington, I firmly believe that he could develop into a very serviceable wide 
wide receiver here in the NFL. We're looking for potentially a wide receiver one if we don't resign Alshon. If not, we just need another compliment in there. I think Carrington is a very, very uh, strong option right now. Like I said, 650 yards, five TDs for Utah, a team that's predominantly been known to run the ball. That when he gets his opportunities, he is making big time plays, and he is my sleeper wide receiver as of week seven of the college football season. Going to the fifth round, we have two fifth round picks. With the first one, I have taken Quinn Blanding, the safety from Virginia, 6'2", 215. Kind of in the mold of a money backer a little bit. Um, tackle machine. He's he started ever since he was a freshman. As a freshman, 123 tackles, three picks. As a sophomore, 115 tackles. As a junior, 118 tackles from the safety spot. He's at Virginia Small School. This guy's been a tackle machine, and we need to look at getting some better safety depth. I know he's not really the bolt, the mold and the build of a Philadelphia Eagles safety. It seems like we like getting these converted corners. He is a thumper. That is what we need. We need safety depth right now. We're not looking for someone to take over for Rodney McLeod. We're not looking for someone to take over for Malcolm Jenkins. We're looking for a guy that when he can come in, if one of those guys gets injured, he's not going to be a liability, but also a guy that can make meaningful snaps. And I would much rather a big-time thumper like Quinn Blanding to give us kind of a yin and a yang in the safety spot. Then right now we have Jalen Watkins, who's, again, another converted corner guy that not a thumper. Right now, the hardest hitter in our secondary is looking like Razul Douglas, and he's a corner. Getting a guy like Quinn Blanding completely will turn that landscape upside down. He's a big-time hitter and exactly what I think we need in our secondary. Going to our second fifth-round pick, it's time for Donnie Longball to be over, and we're going with my Florida Gator bias. Selecting Johnny Townsend, the punter from Florida. In my opinion, he's the best punter in college football. He averages almost 50 yards a punt. Uh, very, very clutch. He's the best player on Florida. Offense. If you, if you count special teams and offense, he's the best player. The constantly, we're relying on him to switch field position. He's dumping it down in the 20, like, every damn time. So I think we have to get a punter. And I think Johnny Townsend can be the next Johnny Hecker, in my incredibly biased opinion. But I, there's not a better punter in, in college football right now. I think Philadelphia should look elsewhere, especially because Donnie Jones is getting paid decent money. He's, like, one of the more higher, more expensive. He's probably fringe top five in terms of punter. And with a team like Philadelphia that's a little tight around the cap, I think it's best to get a replacement that's probably better, definitely has more upside, and it's going to be way more cheaper. If you can cut corners there, uh, you're going to be looking a little bit better. I think Johnny Townsend will be a terrific pick here in the fifth round. And last but not least, in our sixth round, our final pick, I have is going with Jack Sitchi, outside linebacker from Wisconsin, doubling up on linebackers. He's a guy that most definitely would have been picked probably rounds three to four, but he had a torn ACL, so with that, you usually kind of assume that the draft is going to take a big, big hit. He's an outside linebacker, whereas T.J. Edwards is more of an inside linebacker. Still, we need linebacker depth all across the board. And last year with Wisconsin as a junior, he had 60 tackles, 7 tackles for a loss, a sack and a half, and he's not a complete liability. Dropping back into coverage looked really good alongside T.J. Watt. A couple times, you couldn't tell which one was which out there. You're just saying, man, that, look at that linebacker making plays. Was that Watt or, or Sitchi? So I would definitely jump over these Wisconsin linebackers. I think they would add excellent, excellent depth to the Philadelphia Eagles linebacking core, which currently does not have that. So at 6'2", 235, you know, versatile, versatile, versatile. And that's what you, all you can hope for here in the sixth round. So there you go, guys. That is my quick take for the Philadelphia Eagles mock draft. Nothing too, too fancy. You know, use my mock drafts are 20 minutes long. You got graphics and everything. This is more so just kind of shooting the shit, seeing where... Throwing out some feelers. Let me know what you guys think of this mock draft. Are there any picks you guys are looking out for? Let me know in the comment section below. It's your first time stopping by. Don't be afraid to hit that subscribe button. And until next time, it's C4 saying peace out.